In the grand tapestry of life, each thread, each unique species, is a testament to the relentless march of evolution. Among them, one story stands out, our story, our journey from a single cell to the complex beings we are today, is a saga billions of years in the making. So let's go back to the beginning, shall we? Scientists think that all life on Earth, every creature great and small, shares a common ancestor. That's right, all animals, trees and plants can trace their roots back to a single source, a primordial soup of life. Now here's where things get really interesting. Scientists believe that life on Earth began around 4 billion years ago. That's a lot of zeros, folks. Picture a world without continents, just vast oceans teeming with life. It was a world vastly different from the one we know today, and yet it was in those very waters that life first emerged. Now hold on to your hats because things are about to get even crazier. The story goes that the earliest form of life wasn't even a complete cell. Say what? Yeah, we were all a bit of a mess back then. Scientists think it started with free-floating nucleotides. You know those building blocks of life, DNA and RNA? Well, they weren't assembled into neat little packages back then. They were just hanging out separately. In this primordial soup, the nucleotides somehow assembled themselves. Into RNA, which eventually formed a molecule known as peptid il transferase center PTC. This PTC enabled the joining of amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, and wouldn't you know it, some of these RNA molecules even had the ability to self-replicate. Scientists speculate that these RNA-based structures might have served as both genetic material and catalysts, a one-two punch of biology. Now here comes the big reveal. Scientists believe that this strange assortment of molecules, including PTCs and self-replicating RNA, came together to form the very first ancestor of all life. They call it the first universal common ancestor or FUCA. FUCA was a far cry from the neatly organized cells we're all used to today. It's more like a collection of molecules trying their best to stay alive. FUCA wasn't a cell and didn't contain DNA or genes. Can you imagine how crazy that is? It may have resembled something like a virus, that mysterious entity that blurs the line between living and non-living. But here's the thing, FUCA couldn't grow or reproduce on its own. It relied on the conditions of its environment. But despite its simplicity, or maybe because of it, FUCA laid the foundation for all life to come. But wait, there's more. As time went on, FUCA underwent changes, adapting and evolving into more complex forms until it eventually gave rise to the last universal common ancestor, or LUCA. Yes, another acronym, but trust me, it's worth knowing. Think of LUCA as the ultimatog, the original cool kid on the block, the one who started it all, scientists believe. That LUCA existed around 3,800 million years ago, marking a significant chapter in the history of life on Earth. LUCA is like the main character in the story of life. All life on Earth today, animals, plants, fungi, bacteria, you name it, can trace their lineage back to this remarkable organism. It's the grandparent of everything, the common ancestor that connects all living things. So what did LUCA look like, you ask? Well, scientists have put together a pretty good picture. They believe that LUCA was a unicellular organism, a tiny cell that carried out all the functions of life within a single compartment. It probably resembled a simple prokaryotic microbe, unlike eukaryotic cells, which have a nucleus, LUCA's genetic material, DNA, probably floated freely within the cell. But don't let its simplicity fool you. LUCA is believed to have had around 355 genes, the instructions for building and maintaining life. Amazingly, these genes are still found in all life forms today, from the smallest bacteria to the largest whale. It's like having a genetic fingerprint that connects us all. And get this, in 2016, William Martin at the University of Dusseldorf made an astounding discovery. He and his team uncovered that these 355 genes present in LUCA are nearly identical to those found in modern-day eukaryotes. Talk about a blast from the past. These genes are responsible for fundamental cellular processes such as DNA replication, transcription, and translation. They're the basic functions that keep us alive and kicking. But the story doesn't end there. Martin and his team also identified approximately 100 additional proteins found in all eukaryotes that were absent from the original set of 355. These proteins, which didn't exist in LUCA, play crucial roles in cellular processes unique to eukaryotes. 
What's even more mind-blowing is that these proteins are encoded by genes located in the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. This discovery shed new light on the origin of eukaryotes, suggesting that they might have acquired some of their defining characteristics through a process called endosymbiosis. Endosymbiosis basically means one cell engulfing another, which sounds terrifying, but in this case, it's a friendly takeover. Scientists hypothesize that a simple prokaryotic cell, much like LUCA, engulfed an aerobic bacterium that could use oxygen for energy production. Instead of destroying the bacterium, the cell decided to keep it, forming a symbiotic relationship. Over time, this partnership became so beneficial that the engulfed bacterium evolved in two. The mitochondria we know today, this evolutionary event is considered one of the most significant in the history of life, marking the transition from simple to complex cells. So thanks to endosymbiosis, Luca, our ancient ancestor, gained the ability to harness the power of oxygen for energy, setting the stage for the emergence of multicellularity and ultimately giving rise to the diversity of eukaryotic life we see today. Now let's fast forward a bit in this epic saga, after Luca came two major branches. On the tree of life, bacteria and archaea, these microorganisms may seem simple, but they're incredibly diverse and abundant. As the eons rolled by, one particular type of bacteria known as cyanobacteria took center stage. These guys were the first organisms on Earth to harness the power of the sun. Through photosynthesis, they converted sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide into energy, releasing oxygen as a byproduct. And let's not forget about the oxygen. As these photosynthetic bacteria thrived, they began to release significant amounts of oxygen into the atmosphere over millions of years. This oxygen gradually built up, transforming the Earth's atmosphere from a mild reducing state to an oxidizing one. This pivotal shift, known as the Great Oxidation Event, had profound implications for life on Earth. It paved the way for the evolution of aerobic respiration, allowing organisms to extract energy from organic molecules more efficiently using oxygen. This newfound ability fueled the emergence of more complex life forms, setting the stage for the incredible biodiversity we see today. So without cyanobacteria, we might not have the lush forests and vibrant ecosystems that make our planet so beautiful. But the story doesn't end there. Around the same time, something else remarkable was happening in the microscopic world. Some bacteria began taking up residence inside other cells, forming mutually beneficial relationships. These partnerships were the beginning of a beautiful friendship. As these bacteria lived alongside their hosts, they gradually lost some of their independence, eventually becoming essential components of the cell. This evolutionary, Journey LED to the emergence of the first eukaryotes, cells with a nucleus, marking a significant leap in complexity. The bacteria that made this transition into the cell became known as mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Equipped with their own DNA, mitochondria played a crucial role in cellular respiration, extracting energy from nutrients and producing ATP, the cell's primary energy currency. With the advent of mitochondria, cells gained the ability to harness energy more efficiently, fueling the evolution of larger, more complex organisms. It was like adding turbo to the cell, allowing it to grow and thrive in ways it never could before. As the eons passed, these eukaryotes branched out into three major kingdoms, animals, fungi, and algae, also known as protists. Each kingdom embarked on its own evolutionary adventure, leading to the incredible diversity of life we see today. Within these kingdoms, the branches of life continued to diversify, giving rise to new species and filling the earth with a tapestry of living beings. And here we are, perched on the tip of one of those branches, Homo, Sapiens, a species that somehow managed to evolve the capacity to ponder its own existence. We find ourselves at the pinnacle of a remarkable journey, the product of billions of years of evolution. From the simplest of beginnings, life has flourished, adapted and conquered challenges beyond our wildest imaginations. As we gaze upon the stars, we're reminded that our story is merely a chapter in the grand narrative of the cosmos. On this tiny blue dot, life has found a way to thrive in all its diversity and complexity. And while our journey has been marked by countless challenges, we stand here today as a testament to the resilience and adaptability of life itself. But remember, our story isn't over, 
Every moment brings us closer to new discoveries, new understandings of the forces that have shaped us and continue to guide our evolution. Who knows what wonders the future may hold? Perhaps we'll unravel the secrets of our distant ancestors or even venture beyond our pale blue dot in search of life elsewhere in the universe. The possibilities are as boundless as the universe itself. So let us embrace the mystery, marvel at the complexity, and celebrate the beauty of our existence. For we are the product of billions of years of cosmic wonder, and our story is far from over. All right, folks, that brings us to the end of our journey through the fascinating story of life on Earth. From humble beginnings in the primordial soup to the emergence of complex cells and the breathtaking diversity of living things, we've explored the key milestones that have shaped our world. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the ride. And hey, if you're still hungry for more knowledge, why not check out this video next? It's a fascinating exploration of what exactly makes us us. Thanks for joining us. Keep asking questions and stay curious. Until next time, keep an eye on the sky. There's always something incredible waiting to be discovered.